Okay. There we go. So hello, welcome. It's Joe. I'm going to talk about anger today. Hopefully you can see this and hear this okay. Fingers crossed. I've got some dark coloured pens, so I'll stand out. Anger. Anger. <laughs> what comes up for you when you hear that anger is? What is that? If you finish that sentence, what would you come up with? So, anger is either bad or good or whatever. It's, it's, it's neither bad nor good. It's just energy. It's just energy. And it's energy that wants to change things. So think of it as... Um, Think of it as, as a noble anger, so noble, as in there's a noble part of somebody that wants something to change. Noble anger. Something that people don't think of very often, but if, if you think of um, something in your life is going on outside that you'd like to be different in some way, oftentimes the energy that arises is anger, and that's because that's the anger, that, that's the thing that can get things done, and it's good to be getting things changed. Where anger causes a problem is where people don't use it constructively, they don't use it mindfully, they don't use it with any sense of direction. It kind of gets spread all over and then there's a huge fallout and other people end up getting hurt. Um, so, uh, let's have a look at that. There's three different kinds of anger. Think of this as well. Um, first one, primary. Primary anger. Primary. And that's a direct response to something. So, the, like the name primary, it's young, younger people, normally by the time you're in the school, year one, you would be conditioned out of this, you know, or socialised out of it, however you're going to think of that. So, it's the kind of thing where, you know, a little Johnny might be playing in the sand pit and Billy the kindy bully comes along and pinches something he was playing with from him. So... Little Johnny just whacks him around the side of the head with a, a spade, you know, instantly. And it's instantly over for him. <laughs> Johnny might be in therapy for years, but, you know, it's it's all sorted out in the moment. So the, you recognise it because there's no, there's no residual energy, there's no residual resentment. So it's a direct response, direct response to something, a, 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 some sort of stimulus. Okay, a direct response. <laughs> in a reasonable proportion as well. Secondary, secondary anger. So when someone gets a bit older, they learn that you can't go around. Oh, some primary anger things, other things that are primary anger is things like um, biting, uh, spitting, uh, kicking, throwing something at someone. They, they could be all primary anger things. Um, makes sense probably. So secondary Secondary, you learn, you know, you get a bit older, six, seven, eight, you learn that biting and spitting on people is not okay. So you got, the energy will still come up, anger will still come up from time to time. You want to change things in your environment. So what tends to happen is, it's not a direct response anymore. It's like, a, it's, um, it's an indirect response. So a good example for secondary anger is, uh, you might have a, you might have a boss who's not very good for you. And so... You can't go up to your boss and tell them what you really think of them because you probably lose your job. So, um, what happens is the anger is still stewing in there, stewing, stewing, stewing. So, what happens is you go home, you might uh, scream at the kids, kick the dog, shout at your wife, shout at your husband, whatever, whatever the, or partner, whatever the heck it is. You might have a massive blow up about something. It's usually a disproportionate thing, so... You know, one of the kids could drop something like a ice cream or a bowl of sugar or something and you'd have a complete off the deep end paddy fit, you know, screaming and shouting and all that stuff. So that's secondary anger. It's often disproportionate as well. And it's never directed at the person that's, you know, it feels like it's the cause of the anger to come up. So it's indirect. It's indirect. And then um, some of the ways... Secondary anger might show up is uh, humor. Humor often gets used. Uh, you know that kind of humor that there's a scapegoat, or um, you know there's, there's 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 like a target group in this sort of humor, or the kind of humor that's sarcastic, and that that's that's the sort of stuff that's secondary anger. 
often comedians are fueled on anger. You know, I'm not going stuff to be angry about, but comes across, you know, as ha ha ha. But if you really sit around and feel what's really going on, it's, it's often it's often anger, secondary anger. Um, the third one is called uh, tertiary anger, tertiary anger, and that's uh, that's the trickiest. So someone who does tertiary anger well you might not really see it like if there was a camera watching you might not be able to go oh yes that's it but once you're kind of looking out for it and you know what you're looking out for you can certainly start to feel it and then you might start to spot it as well around the place so tertiary anger um humor's in there as well some some, some sarcastic stuff you know kind of tertiary and secondary melt together around humor but tertiary anger um, doesn't really look like anything. So if there's a camera watching, you know, say you're you're driving along in your car and you're doing forty uh, mile an hour or forty k's in a sixty zone, and there's someone right in front of you, they're going really really slow, and you can't get past them, and you you can feel your tension starting to build, and you can feel yourself getting angry, and you're just wanting to force them off the road and get past. If you did that, you'd look like the lunatic and not them. So they could be doing a tertiary anger number on you. And you recognise it because you're the one who ends up getting angry. So passive-aggressive stuff, that's all tertiary anger. You know, you might you might say to your kids, uh, oh, there's your washing there, can you put that basket of washing away? And they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next day, the basket of washing's still there. And the day after, it's still there. And the day after, it's still there. So you say, I thought you were going to put that washing Oh, yeah, I yeah, am, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You can feel yourself building some anger around that. Well, I could feel myself around that example. So, you know, eventually you might have a total fit and then the kids will be going, Oi! you know, mum or dad's had a fit and they might have been doing tertiary anger all along. So it's like a, it's like the handball in Australian uh, parlance or you um, chuck someone a hand grenade or something. So going slowly might be tertiary anger. Someone in the shop and trolley or the shop and trolley like hogging all the aisle could be doing tertiary anger. So you tend to recognise it afterwards and you can find yourself going, hang on, I feel really blooming angry, but I don't know what, what the hell's going on. So just check it might have been someone doing one of these things on you. So tertiary anger. So start to look out for that. Um practical jokes that all fits in there in tertiary anger. Because someone does a practical joke on someone they get hurt, everyone's having a good old ha-ha-ha and the person that's got hurt often gets angry and everyone, that's because that's a big tertiary, really bad tertiary anger activity to get involved in, pranks and stuff like that. So anger, um, that's probably enough of that. So think of it in terms of just energy, and which is what it is. So there's your, there's your anger volcano. And what it takes, so, uh, you know, I think of it, uh, this would be normally red, because red is probably the best colour for anger. But blue shows up better on this board. So that amount of anger is going. So if you've got a big story that anger is not okay, so you're going to try and suppress that, you're going to put a lid on that, you're going to put a lid on that. And so what happens is, eventually, the amount of energy going up there equals the amount of energy going there to keep that lid on. You end up with zero energy left. And then you end up, you end up in that place where it's ever so easy to get labelled with things like depression. I think it should be better named suppression. That's what it is, that's the end result. So you suppress enough energy for long enough, surely you end up with none left to use for anything else. Um, so anger, because it's a, it's it's um well, what is it? What is it in your life? You know, you know. It's good to think about where where your whole story around anger came from. So people have got a family history around violence, or they've had someone in the family who was very good at anger. Kind of in a family system, they might hold the um, almost hold the Olympic torch for that particular emotion. It fits with all different emotions as well. So what's it like, and how and how do you use anger in the world? in a conscious way and so gotta get in relationship with it the more in relationship you get with it the more you can realize you can let, let the stuff out and nothing bad's going to happen you've got to learn how to do that in a safe way and in a healthy way 
maybe some coaching training or some emotion training or all of the above. Yeah, I think that's about it. So noble anger, it's all about there is a part of a person that is wanting something better to be happening outside of himself. So that's that noble part that gets triggered inside. So um, you might want a better life for yourself or your partner or your children and you might mobilise that energy called anger to do stuff. Great. Um, you might need to protect yourself sometime. Great energy to access to be able to protect yourself. Anger. Great, ang great energy to be able to set personal boundaries. Perfect. And then... Um, Think of it as a friend and an ally, so imagine it as a noble thing, a noble part of yourself that is only trying to do its best and it might have done, it might have operated unskillfully in the past, but that was in the past before you knew some of this stuff. So once you start to get conscious and you start to learn that you have some choices to make, there's a choice point in every time you might want to have gone off in the past, there's a choice point. So... It's all about being in relationship with yourself and it's all about being in relationship with all these emotions, not just the anger, but and then you, you get to choose what you do with your energy instead of imagining you're some kind of victim who was a, who, who was a, a, at the whims of what the emotions are doing. Up, you know, so that's it. Noble anger. Thank you.